Bring to you first shocking allegations made against an OU star running back. A woman is accusing Rodney Anderson of rape. We do have team coverage of the fallout of those claims tonight. First, let's start with reporter Micah Hatfield, who joins us with what she has learned about the protective order filed against Anderson. Micah. Brian and Shara, the woman checked the box on her petition for the protective order, saying that she is a victim of rape. But Rodney Anderson took to Twitter this afternoon, blatantly denying that claim. In her petition for the protective order, the 23 year old woman says she met Rodney Anderson at a bar on November 16th. She says she went to two bars with the 21 year old running back and his friends were insistent he take her home. The woman writes she remembers kissing Anderson and then throwing up once she got back to her apartment. It wasn't until this past weekend. The woman says she started recalling images and feelings from that night. She says she remembers sexual contact and trying to get away to put her clothes on. There are things that that are indicated here in the summary from the Norman Police Department and the allegations that she's making in the protective order that quite honestly leave a great many holes in the story. The woman filed for a protective order Monday, the same day she filed a police report. Tulsa attorney Adam Weintraub says in his experience, that is not common. This report was done by an amateur and the police report indicates that there's further investigation. So there may be something else that we're not aware of. Weintraub says the woman could have waited to report what happened because she was trying to process the trauma. But he says it will make it harder to prosecute the case if it gets to that point. There was time for her to heal from if there had been a cut or abrasion, if there had been some some bruising. Anderson's attorney says the woman tried to pursue a relationship with him since their encounter on November 16th. The woman says the running back turned down several social invitations from her, and that's when the protective order was filed. Anderson himself took to Twitter this afternoon, writing he never thought he would have to defend himself, but he did not do it. The easy thing for the district attorney or the police to do is to move forward. It requires them to take some political risk to say, no, this case does not have enough evidence right now to move forward. An emergency protective order was granted by a judge, but Anderson and the woman will have to appear in court on Monday, November 18th to see if it'll stick. OU said in a statement that they are cooperating with Norman police. Live in Norman, Micah Hatfield, two works for you. All right, thank you, Micah. Our team coverage continues tonight because the timing of this case is twofold. Sports director Caden McFarland joins us with what it could mean for the Sooners who are now headed to the college football playoffs. Caden. Brian, quite simply, too early to say for sure. Lincoln Riley yet to comment on the situation. The two parties telling different stories. We do know this, though. Anderson, very valuable to the Sooners offense right now. Did not play much to start the year, but over the past two months or so, Anderson has been not only one of OU's best player, frankly, he's been one of the best running backs in the entire country. Last seven games, nearly 1,200 total yards, 14 touchdowns. And while OU has the nation's number one offense, their opponent in the Rose Bowl, Georgia, I just have the very best defense in the country. And with Anderson denying the allegations, a bowl game suspension before that hearing on the 18th sure seems unlikely. Back to you. All right, thank you, Caden. We first broke this story on our website, kjrh.com. You can also stay up to date with breaking news alerts by downloading our Two Works For You app.